Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. First, I'd uh, like to uh, thank our very good bishop for uh, inviting uh, me to this uh, pandeminar. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's a series of uh, uh, different topics. And uh, our topic tonight is uh, zoonotic transmissions. I would also like to thank first everybody who is online. Uh, good morning or good morning, good evening, whatever the time is, uh, whatever you are. I'd like to uh, thank you also for tuning in and uh, giving us of your time tonight. So uh, when we were talking with uh, the bishop at the um, we were exchanging notes and uh, asking how health was and how everything was. We suddenly uh, looked at the possibility of uh, talking tonight in the pandemic. And um, we were talking about how the COVID crisis has really hit us. And um, I'd like to talk more about that in the next uh, 30 minutes or so. And, uh, I would just like to see that this pandemic really has uh, brought us a lot of uh, consilience, yeah, both in the public health and the creation care. And um, that's what we wanted to talk about with the bishop, looking at the stewardship of our creation. And if we will be able to understand the relationship and the consilience of uh, public health, climate change, its adaptation, and uh, creation care, then we will be able to bring about more mapping points, so to speak, for our holistic approach to uh, health and uh, missions as we do it uh, here at Mary Johnson and hopefully in the whole Philippine uh, Central Conference. Um, our next slide will show us how we would like to look at the topic tonight. You know, there are four sections to this topic. And uh, for your information, we are going to have an overview first of uh, what climate change is all about. I know that a lot of us already know about climate change or have heard about it and more so have felt it already. And uh, just as the bishop was saying, uh, there is another low pressure area. And uh, we, we know that uh, through the last uh, uh, few weeks, we've uh, had a lot of uh, typhoons, which you know is normal for the Philippines. And um, we have heard over the other um, you know, countries having a lot of flooding right now, which they didn't have before. So we'll have an overview of that, and then we'll, look, we'll shift to looking at health and uh, the social determinants. You know, um, for a fact, there are a lot of other things that determine our health, and usually they're not of health concerns. And then we'll, we'll shift to uh, the biodiversity and the ecosystems, which is essentially our environment and how we react to them. And uh, what we were talking about, uh, zoonosis, and then last but not the least, we look at what are pot potential adaptation strategies and practices for us over this uh, zoonosis or the spillover, so to speak, of all of these diseases to us. So uh, let's go on. So a brief overview of uh, how we are in the Philippines. Um, the next slide will show us that uh, there are two types of uh, uh, geographical risks. Uh, first is that we are an archipelag uh, archipelagic in nature. No? And because of that, we have different islands, island groups. Uh, we have three main islands. And because of the, the island groupings, we have what we call a highly vulnerable geographic risk. Right, so uh, let's look at uh, this impacts of climate change. You know? uh, we have uh, very long coastlines and we have a tropical climate. And uh, as uh, I was telling you a while ago, we have around 22 to 24, uh, what do you call this? Um, storms or typhoons. No? And uh, we have, uh, next please, our uh, increased frequency of these extreme weather events. No? Um, while we have not felt it yet, uh, we have sea level rise. It's being felt already in other countries around the world because of the, the glaciers, which are already, uh, what do you call this? Natutunaw na sila, right? And because of that, they have, from ice, they have now become uh, water. 
and it has caused a sea level rise. Also because of the climate change and uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the greenhouse gases, we have a rising temperatures and extreme rainfall. So it's not just, you know, number of times, but it's from signal number three to signal number five. No? Yeah. We now have extreme weather events, both drought, the other extreme, or too much rain, and uh, the frequency and extent of this. So uh, we have become highly vulnerable because of this, uh, uh, our uh, geographical risk. And uh, subsequent, we have, because of that, direct and indirect health impacts. So uh, next, please. We will have uh, an increased incidence of infectious diseases. These are some of the direct and indirect impacts of uh, climate change. And we will also have population displacement and the disruption of both our agricultural and economic activities. These are the indirect uh, effects and health impacts of climate change. Next slide will uh, show us the direct and indirect impacts of what we're talking about. So you can see here that uh, direct impacts are examples of which are heat waves. And we hear this already happening in, um, in Europe, right? And also in Germany, in places where it's not, it's supposed to be originally cold, it's not anymore. We, they are experiencing a lot of heat waves. Um, also in radiation from the sun, wherein it's too hot and uh, it can cause uh, what we call cancers of the skin. And uh, this is very evident even in the Philippines. And uh, we know for a fact that uh, we have very hot uh, temperatures in the Philippines. We uh, can get up to 40. But uh, mind you, even as we talk right now, in New Delhi, it's around 45 degrees uh, centigrade. So you can imagine it's not hindi lang tayo kumbulsyon na 40 degrees. Ang 45 degrees, eh, pumuputok na ho kasi ang ating mga cells by that time. But you can imagine how hot it can be in those parts of the, of the world. So that, those are some of the direct effects. And in, indirect effects also are there. And um, air pollution and respiratory diseases are not direct effects of climate change, but because of the disturbance of the environment, the greenhouse gases, we have air pollution and we also have extreme events. As we were saying a while ago, we have flooding and uh, storms. These are the hydrological extreme events. And uh, we also have other extreme events. Now. This causes trauma, hydrological, and it, it can also cause, because of the flooding, waterborne and water wash diseases, uh, which is brought about by this water or the lack of it, we call it right, typhoid. They can, only be, they can also be vector-borne, what we call mosquitoes, right? Sila po ang nagdadala ng mga sakit na to, and ticks, no? um, both which are vector-borne. Sila po ang vectors ng sakit. So, yung sakit mismo ay hindi pa. And uh, we have El Nino, but it's not yet established if uh, the malnutrition which is caused by this is really, El Nino is really part of climate change and as studies are ongoing for looking at that relationship with climate change. So you see, in as much as we have direct and indirect effects of this, right? Um, go ahead. To the trauma that uh, drowning, flooding, and uh, the hydrologic effects, it can also have other indirect effects. So meron ng indirect, meron pang indirect to the indirect. And uh, we're talking about this. Yeah, there's going to be ecosystem destruction. Right? Because uh, extensive flooding or extensive droughts can disturb and destroy our ecosystems. Next, please. We can also food, we have food and water disruption. And we can also have infectious disease and vector affectation. So you, you will see that um, uh, throughout all of this, we are right now having already health problems as it is, but you put on top of that climate change, you can imagine how much problems you will have on top of the climate, uh, of the uh, already existing uh, health conditions that we have right now. Um, 
before I show you the next slide, I'd like to siguro ask you some questions. Ano? If, if given that there are a range of different diseases, I will give you some diseases and then maybe I can show a hand, show, show hands. Ano? If uh, these diseases are um, climate related or not. Okay? Sexually transmitted diseases. Is this climate related or not? Can I see a show of hands? Sexually transmitted diseases. Ito ho ba ay climate related o hindi? Okay. Some are raising. All right. How about asthma? Is this climate related or not? Asthma. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I hear a few of you say yes. All right. How about? It is. It is. All right. How about tuberculosis? It is. Climate related, huh? tuberculosis, TB. Yes. Climate related. Okay. And then, of course, heat stress. Is that climate related or not? It is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'll show you, I'll show you a slide. The next slide will show us ranking of how climate related or climate sensitive diseases are. So heat stress is very high on the list. It's number one, as we were saying a while ago. There are direct and indirect effects. No? So the nearer it is to the climate effect of the disease, the more, the higher it does a sensitivity to climate or the more that it is related to climate. So we'll show you a rundown of all of this. Go ahead. So... The lower that we go, there's, tu there's tuberculosis, there's uh, MI, or uh, there's asthma. Most cancers, and last but not the least, are go ahead, sexually transmitted diseases. So you can see from a high to low, the climate sensitivity of what diseases there are. So you can see that climate really affects these diseases. Right? I'd like you to think of it that way because usually we were not thought to think, we, we were not taught as doctors to think that way. Na, Ay, nako, ito pala ang, ano, um, air pollution is an effect of uh, climate or asthma is an effect of climate, no, or the environment. Um, because we were too medical in our thinking, we were not looking we were also only looking at bacteria and vet and uh, viruses but actually we did not look at so much the environment and so just to tell you that you know really diseases are very much climate sensitive now let's talk about climate variability or how 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 differing climate is it is the, the increasing frequency right so it's not only variable, nag-iiba-iba siya. Kung hindi, yung dalas ng kanyang pag-iiba at saka yung tindi. No? So yung dalas at saka yung tindi ng climate variability. So, the frequency and intensity also have very important consequences for him. You see, it influences such diseases as diarrhea and malaria, uh, which kill a lot of people, no? millions annually. And um, also to talk about temperature, precipitation and humidity, these are already climate related. And yet, these three, temperature, precipitation, or rainfall, at saka yung ating humidity, yung dami ng uh, tubig in the atmosphere, affects the life cycle of the vectors. So nakaka-apekto ho yun. Kung ulan ng ulan, may kita ho natin, mas marami pong mga nabubuhay na lamok uh, na, na tumitira sa mga puddles. So the life cycle of the vectors and these infectious agents, they carry and therefore will affect the transmission and the dynamics of both water and foodborne diseases.
So makikita natin na climate variability will really affect what's happening to the diseases. Okay? Our next slide will just show us climate variability and its relation now to ecosystems. Kanina sabi natin, climate variability lang. So which includes extreme events, frequency and intensity. But for a fact, climate also relates to ecosystems. Climate variability and increasing frequency and intensity also have important consequences for health, as we said. But biodiversity, right? generally, pagkaiba-iba natin sa buhay, mga tanim, yung mga tao, yung mga animals, at yung ecosystems, they are very much interconnected to climate change because they are affected by these extreme weather events. Now, there are both abiotic and biotic factors, and these are the ones that we're saying. Abiotic are non-life, which are the temperature, precipit precipitation, and humidity, which affects the biodiversity no, and the biomes and ecosystems. And uh, so it is a balance that is important. And an excess of either which, well, of either which, as sabi nga natin, eh, for example, there's extreme weather event or there's extreme drought, it can cause domination of one species over the other. May namamatay, may nabubuhay no, na species. And because of that, there has to be a balance. However, if we are already at the phase that we are the ones uh, that are contributing the, to the imbalance, it has to be us also that will look at the possible solutions to these imbalances. Our next section then looks at social determinants of health. Okay? Our next slide will just show us that health has other determinants. And they we call them the social determinants. They are either than climate change. You will look at this, no? Look at this slide. Look at the small circles around this big one. You know? Those, these are the social determinants of health. Economic stability, while it is not related to health, affects health. Social and community context affects health. Education, which is not health, affects health. Neighborhood and environment and affects health. Now, healthcare itself, right, affects what happens to health. So you can see if uh, we have a primary healthcare system that's very poor, like what we have in the Philippines. Uh, dito kasi ang mas sikat siya nasa hospital eh. Yung mga nasa mga health center, hindi masyadong sikat, hindi masyadong binibigay ng pondo yung mga yun. Ano? And what happens is that they all become interrelated and they become social determinants. So they affect health by, for example, economic stability. If we have a very poor uh, economic stability like in the Philippines, then we do not have resources anymore for the things that will matter. Okay? Kung mababa ang ating gross domestic product, then we will not be able to give to our social concerns. Okay? And then if education is also poor and we are not knowledgeable or do not like to be knowledgeable about things, then it will also affect our health. Right? So knowledge is also very important. So you can see now that ito pa lang mga social determinants of health are very much important in order that we will understand how climate change affects us. Now, the next slide will just show us a more direct and indirect relationship. No? Kung may kita natin, climate change is there on top, right? So, ang nasa gitna nito is the health of the person. But you will see now that affectations because of uh, what's happening in the environment, our development, eh, nasisira yung ating mga lupain, nababawasan ang damit sa kauri ng mga halaman at hayop, sa deforestation, nawawala ang sariwang tubig, pagka tayo ay hukay ng hukay at gawa, gawa ng subdivision at mga condominium, nasisipsip ng lahat. No? Pagbawas sa ozone layer, pagka tayo ay palaging sakay ng sakay ng aeroplano at nasisira ang ozone layer, so you'll see now there's UV exposure, 
right? Ang dami at kalidad ng ligtas sa tubig ay kakaunti na lang. Nagbabago ang pag-ulan at nagkakaroon ng pagtigang. Uh, there's drought already and uh, eh, yung paglikas ng mga tao, they, uh, they have now become, I don't know if you've heard of this phrase, climate refugees. Diba? Dahil sa sama ng klima sa isang mundo, sa isang parte ng mundo, aalis na yung mga tao doon. Pagka lubog na lubog na yung kanilang tinitirhan, aalis na yung mga tao doon. They now become what we call climate refugees. And because of that, yung kalusugan ng tao is really already affected because of climate change and all of these other affectations. So as much as social determinants of health are there, climate change really has a direct and indirect effect. It affects a lot of this, and this is what we call our bio diversity. So biodiversities and ecosystems and climate change really have a relationship to each other and to its effects on health. Okay. Our next slide will show us what we mean by ecosystems. Now, ecosystems are the interactions between biota, no? these are the living creatures such as plants and animals within the environment. Maybe you will remember this is like a biology lecture when you were, were no, no, when you were in high school. So may kita lang natin that, uh, you know, while our trees produce oxygen, diba? they are needing carbon dioxide and photosynthesis, and they are the producers. No? And our secondary consumers are our animals, or the primary consumers, no? kakainin ng mga animals. And then, nagbidecompose ng soil. So, and then it rains. So there's water in order to feed the plant. So, nakita natin yan, these are the interactions. And pagka nagulo itong mga to, no? if we're doing too much of one or doing too much of the other, it's going to create an imbalance with our environment. And that is where the problem lies. When climate change sets in and we do not look at our ecosystems, which are already affected because of climate change, and we ourselves are the cause of the climate change. So what happens? Our next slide will just show us vectors. No? These are diseases which are carried by vectors. Now, you will see if we have natin na daily, seasonal, or year-to-year -year climate variability. Masyado matindi. Hindi na alam kung kailan magtatanim. Natin-natin na pre-predict ng ating mga farmers na ganito, nagtag-ulang, ganyan-ganyan, nagtag-araw, pwede na magtanim. Ang nangyayari ngayon, hindi na alam. Masyado ng short o masyadong long, eh, hindi na rin malaman kung paano yung effects nito sa ating mga tanim. And sometimes, the variability can also result in vector and pathogen adaptation. Sabi nga natin kanina, kung mas maraming drought o mas maraming ulan, eh, mas maraming mga vector na nag adapt in the shifts and expansions in the geographic ranges. Dati-dati, pag tayong drought at maraming kwan, mas mabilis mga nak ang mga mosquitoes at mas malayo ang kanilang nalilipad. So may kita ngayon natin, dati-dati ang dengue nasa isang barangay lang, pero ngayon nasa buong probinsya na. Kasi nakakalipad na ng mas malayo ang ating mga uh, vectors. Right? So our next slide will show us, right, jumping of species. Okay. So uh, you know for a fact no, that uh, we have at least 10,000 viruses, no? And, and these are the ones that have the ability to infect humans. Kaya lang, ngayon, hindi lahat nare-report o hindi lahat nagmamanifest. And they are more in the wild mammals. So nasa mga hayop sila, no? hindi sila sa mga tao. However, changes in climate at saka yung paggamit natin sa land use no? will lead to opportunities para dito sa sharing na to ng viruses no? among previously isolated species of wildlife. Okay. So we're shifting already like uh, after we've given uh, ourselves an overview of climate change and um, the social determinants of health which also affect climate change. And now we're looking at our biodiversity and our reaction and our relationship and interaction to this biodiversity. And uh, we're talking about now these uh, viruses which have stayed in the wildlife 
but are actually starting to jump species or cross species from animals to humans. No? Why? Because the climate or the environment is now being enabled. Nagiging nagiging ano na, nabubuhay na sila ng mas matagal o nakikilipat na sila dahil anong nangyayari? Nawawala na yung kanilang tinitirhan. Right? Because of deforestation, because of dati-dati forest yan, ngayon subdivision na, nawawalan sila ng titirhan. And because of that, the animals are now going and encroaching, or should I say, because of humans encroaching into the forest and the habitat of animals, the animals now are now sharing the space with the humans. Na dapat hindi naman. Ano nangyayari? Marami ng mga umuhin na pupunta sa mga basura. Marami ng ibang hayop na nalalapit sa atin. And, uh, that, and in some cases, next please, right. This will facilitate the zoonotic spillover. Okay. Ito yung pinag-uusapan natin. This is the jumping of species. Yan yung zoonotic spillover is a link between our global environmental change and the emergence of other diseases. At ito pa yung pinag-uusapan natin ngayon dito. Tumatalod na sila. Dati-dati, nasa mga hayop lang yung sakit. At dahil sa, hindi naman sa mga human beings pumupunta, we are not affected by it. Right? If in animals, it does not affect them, we do not know what the effect is in human beings. It may be very different kasi sa kanila, baliwala. Di ba? They just live with the diseases. But when they shift and they they go to another species, si mga tao, yung mga hayop ng uh, sakit na to, there is a zoonotic spillover. There can now become a disease emergence. And that is what we are looking at right now. So we go to what we call is zoonotic. Zoonotic kasi meaning animal, ano? Spillover. All right. So, the COVID-2 virus, no? this pandemic has really, has really laid bare a better understanding. It's an urgent need. Baano nga ba tumatalon ang viruses from animals to people? This zoonotic spillover, no? in general, has the chances that can be divided into three main categories. Ito. So uh, this is going to be too technical, but uh, enough for us to know na meron tinatawag na pathogen pressure. Tapos there's a human and vector behavior, and there is attributes of the host. Okay. Itong tatlong ito, pag nangyari yan, makakatawid. Makakatawid sa tao ang mga viruses at saka mga bakterya. So yung pathogen pressure, ibig sabihin po niya, eh nagkakaroon po ng mutation. Nagkakaroon po yung mutation, yung virus na galing sa hayop para mabuhay siya sa labas ng hayop. Yun yung una. Ngayon, yung human and vector behavior, ito pa yung sinasabi natin, nagkakaroon ng kiskisan. Wherein, the vectors are able to come in contact with human beings. Okay, dati naman walang contact eh, di ba? Either nagkaroon ng pagkasira ng biodiversity at nag-encrouch na yung mga humans doon sa tirahan ng hayop or yung hayop dahil sa napakarami nila ay kinakain sila ng mga human beings. Right? And because of that, yung mga dala nilang mga sakit ay nagkakaroon na ngayon na uh, affectation sa humans. And attributes of the host, yun yung third. Ibig sabihin lang po nun ay ano ba ang meron ng tao na wala yung hayop? At ano ang wala ng tao na meron yung hayop na ngayon ay nakakalipat na siya. So you can see that itong tatlong ito ang nagkakos po ng spillover. Pathogen pressure, human and vector behavior, and attributes of the host. And itong tatlong cases na to, accompanied by significant barriers, no, they should be overcome by the virus. But if it is able to overcome three of these, no, itong, itong mga cases na to, ay makaka-apekto ho talaga sa mga tao yan. And that's what we call the zoonotic spillover. So, may kita ho natin na meron tayong 
infection process. Our next slide shows us this. And what is the infective process that happens? Bababa na po tayo sa molecular. Ano? Ito po yung mga nangyayari. Ano? They, sa molecules, sa cells po natin, sa katawan natin, ano? the virus ay naghahanap po yan ng way para po yan, ano eh, pintuan, meron po siyang susi. Alright? Ngayon yung susi na yun, meron po doon sa nasa cell surface o yun yung pintuan. At pag nahanap po ng virus kung ano yung susi na yun, ay eh, mabubukas na po niya yung pintuan na yan. Alright? At yun yung mga receptors na yan ay dahil sa magaling na at nakamutate na siya, nakapasok na siya sa tao, right? Makaka-replicate na siya. Masususian na niya yung mga pintuan na yan. At hindi lang po isa nagsususi niya. Ang tawag po natin dyan, it is a swarm, a swarm of viruses. Alam mo yung swarm? Ang swarm po ay napaka... You can imagine a locust. Yung locust po ba? Yung mga... Kuwari, maraming grasshoppers na yan. Pagka yan po, yung luma... Ah, nag-atake sa ating mga fields. Uubusin po yan. Hindi lang yung isang locust yan. Ano? Parang ganyan po ang virus. Napakarami nila at... Lahat sila ay nagbubukas-bukas ng mga receptors na yan. And they can replicate themselves without our alerting our immune system. Yung ating pong panlaban ay eh, nakatulog. <laughs> Magaling sila eh, no? para silang uh, nakasecret agent. Ano? Nabubuksan nila para silang mga magdanakaw, nabubuksan nila yung mga pintuan na hindi na-alerto yung pulis ng ating katawan. Kaya... Dumadami sila ng dumadami at nakakapasok sila sa katawan ng tao. Next please. So, ito ngayon, sayaw na to na sinasabi natin, it's a complex dance no? between factors that relate to, sabi nga natin, ecology, viral evolution, and human immunity. So, pagka yan ay natalo na, diba? pagka yan ay yung dance na yan ay natalo na nila at yung gera ay napanalo nila lang, dadami na sila ng dadami. At pagka na-effect na nila isang tao, mas madali na ngayon lumipat sa ibang tao kasi kapareho na sila ng klase ng virus. Paglipat sa ibang tao, ah, kilala na kita, tao ka rin, ha? affected ka na, hindi na ako galit sa hayop. Tao na ako na nakakalipat sa parehong tao. So it, became, it becomes more transmissible and faster to replicate. We human now to human. Okay. So, our recent estimates suggest that as many as 1.67 million ang hindi pa natin alam na virus. And that between 630,000 to 827 of those have the potential to jump species. Dami, no? Kung natin. So, paano na tayo, no? So, totoo lang, nabuhay ang tao na for a lot of years. Ano? Millions of years na nabuhay yan na tao. No? At uh, buhay pa naman tayo hanggang ngayon. Pero makikita natin na ang human immunity talaga ay napaka-importante para hindi, makata hindi makatawid itong mga sakit na ito. So, that's the infective process. No? Ngayon, ano nga ba yung mga uh, tatalunan? No? That's ne our next slide. We call them the hurdles of our viruses. First, no, the original host, the species that serves as the virus so called reservoir. Okay. So, pagkasanabing reservoir, yung mga pupuntahan ng virus okay, na unang titirhan niya. So, if for example, yung sa ano, yung uh, sa coronavirus, sinabi nala, no, na galik ito sa bats. And uh, it has been shown to become deep to be coming from the bats. No? So, nag-shift siya at tumalun siya sa tao. So, how that happened is, uh, da, sabi nila, either nag-aalaga sila ng bats o nagtitinda sila ng bats o kumakain sila ng bats. At dahil doon ay nailipat ito sa tao. Ngayon, ang sabi nila ay kailangan ay may viral load. Ang isipin ho ninyo yung viral load, parang load sa telepono yan. Kailangan mo may load sa telepono para kayo ay makatawag sa telepono. Parang ganyan, dapat ho maraming virus para makalipat siya sa atin. Na hindi naman kasi basta, ay, 
na naampatan lang, lalagyan lang tayo ng virus, eh magkakaroon na tayo ng uh, manifestation. Hindi, kailangan 50,000 virus, hindi 1,000 para magkaroon ng effect sa atin. So, ibig sabihin yan, constant yung, yung paglipat ng reservoir, ng, ng uh, virus dun sa reservoir. And then, they will need now to rub elbows with the next host. Yan yung second natin. No? The virus has to be equipped to enter the human cells. Yan na nga, sa tao. So, dapat, mahakbangan niya yung tatlo kaninang sinabi natin na, at makarami siya sa loob at mabuksan niya lahat ng mga pintuan ng ating mga receptor cells, ng human cells natin. And third, it has to be able to replicate itself. Dapat dadami siya. At may infection, may infection ng panya yung mga ibang cells. And while doing so, nagiging secret siya at hindi siya nakikita ng mga police. So uh, halos mission impossible, ano? pero nangyayari po yan. Ano? At nangyayari po nga sa atin. And along the way, ito na yung very important, they will be able to pick up mutations. Okay, kaya kala nila ganito yung mukha niya, nag na, nagbago ng konti, no? eh nabuhay na ulit siya sa pangalawang tao, nabuhay siya sa pangatlong tao. No? Nag-mutate siya dahil iba-iba naman ang mga genes natin. Kaya ang tanong nga, eh, hindi mo matatapos sa mutations, ay yan ho ang buhay ng virus. Ang virus ay nabubuhay para mag-mutate. Kasi kailangan niya mabuhay ulit in another form, however it is. Right? Sige po. So, may kita ngayon natin na itong mga hinahakbangan na to ay napaka-importante. Ngayon, yan na po yung ano, no? yan na po yung sinasabi natin zoonosis. Yan na po yung explanation ay nakakalipat pala dahil nga dire-diretso at hindi napapansin at maraming nabubuksan ng mga susi ng mga effect, apektadong cells natin. So, very simple lang po yan ano, para hindi mo masyadong komplikado. Ngayon, ang next na nasasabihin sa inyo ay ang ating mga mutations kaya na nangyayari sa katawan. Ano? Ito na yung sabi natin that the viruses mutate to adapt to their surroundings. At saka makalipat sila. Tunan niyo yung drawing dito. Yung dating coronavirus, pulang-pula. Tapos ngayon, medyo mag-iba na siya. Yung spike protein niya, yung mga puti-puti ngayon. Dati pulang-pula yung spike protein. So nakikita natin ngayon, they have to adapt to their surroundings. Magbabago sila ng anyo para makalipat sila ng host. Kaya nga, napakaraming mutation, BA1, BA2.5, BA5, yung ating viruses, di ba? Yung, yung coronavirus, alpha, beta, delta, gamma, ang dami, eh, di ba? Omicron, ubus na natin yung mga ano, Greek alphabets. <laughs> Hindi pa ho matatapos sa mutation na yan. dire dire no? And the mutations can cause viruses to better evade our immune systems. It can also evade treatment and it can also evade our vaccines. Kaya po, nagka-vaccine na ako eh, bakit tinamaan na naman ako ng COVID? Kala ko ba pagka nabakuna na, eh, wala na. Hindi po, dahil this is a race between vaccine and virus mutation. Kaya, the more virus mutations we will have, eh, kailangan mo palakas tayo ng palakas at kumpletuhin po natin ang ating mga vaccines. At least ngayon, hanggang sa booster 2, sana ay meron tayo dahil sabi nga nila, majority pa rin ay kaya-kaya pa rin ang boosters natin. Next please. So makikita nga natin, a mutation can help the virus gain traits or quickly adhere better to the surface of human cells. Yan yung sabi natin, nagbabago ng anyo para pagka kumabit ulit, ah, hindi mo na ako mat, ano, hindi ako tatablan ng mga bago mong vaccine kasi meron na naman akong bagong pagpatikit sa iyo. And sometimes, sometimes, viruses can evolve or mutate so quickly. Ang bilis mo nilang mag-mutate, no? That it doesn't help them develop traits that are advantageous to transmission. The other can also happen which is what happened to Omicron. Ang Omicron, ho, ang bilis, di ba? Ang bilis to be pat, pero walang epekto. Napansin mo ba ninyo na wala masyadong nagkasakit o na ospital nitong Omicron? Pero ang bilis niyang lumipat. Pero dahil sa meron na tayong vaccines, 
kilala na siya na antibody, hindi siya naka-apekto masyado severely except for those who were not vaccinated yet before. So these are our mutations. So, ang, the virus lives to mutate. <laughs> Kailangan siya magbago ng anyo para mabuhay siya at makalipan. Okay, next please. I would just give you 11, 11 na mga nag-jump species ng mga sakit. Sige, um, mabilis lang ho. No? So COVID-19, ito ay nangyari noong December 2019, discovered natin. Yung 1918 na Spanish flu pandemic, uh, kung napansin mo, kung alam ninyo ho ito, noong turn of the century, 1918, one-third of the globe were infected by this influenza virus. No? All right? The bubonic plague, it was a bacterial disease which was brought about by yung nasa mga rats. No? Ito po ang ating vector dito, ang nagdala po dito ay mga rats no? at lumipat-lipat po ito noong 14th century. So may kita ninyo, 14th century, wala pa tayong mga antibiotic noon eh. Kaya ang daming namamatay. Yung flu pandemic, wala rin tayong, wala pa naman tayong H1 N1 na vaccine na katulad ngayon, ano? Kaya ang dami rin hong namamatay na mga tao. Kung baga, immunity came by natural means. Matira, mabuhay, uh, ma ma patatagan na, ano? So, ganun. And then another is the malaria, which we already know, no? It is uh, infected, it is given to us through infected mosquitoes. They are the vectors of malaria. At ito po, I, uh, uh, this is a virus, okay? Hindi po ito bacteria. Virus po ang malaria. No? So, lumilipat po sa atin yan by the infected mosquito bites. Our next slide will show us dengue, which is also carried by mosquitoes, right? Aedes yan, ano, Egypti at saka ano, eh, dalawang genus yan. Eh. At ito ngayon, Ang dengue, kapareho nga kinakagga din ng mosquito at affects 400 million annually. Rabies, we know this, right? At uh, ito po ay nakakamatay pa rin. And uh, mostly in Asia and Africa, pagka yung mga dogs po natin, ang siyang tagadala ng rabies na to. Next please. Hantaviruses, hindi masyado sa atin ito at nasa Amerika to at saka Europe na kung saan ay mga daga ang siyang nagdadala ng virus na tumilipat sa atin, no? yung mga iiihi ng daga, eh yun po ang nakaka-apekto sa pagkanaapakan ng yung mga dumi. Right? So ito po yung when you breathe the dust that has it sa air, na malakas ang hangin, eh makaka-apekto po sa ating mga lungs and heart virus. Right, next slide. Marami po tayo. Ano? Tatlo, apat po na slides ito. Ano? Eh, so may kita ho natin naman, dito naman ay Ebola virus. Ay sorry, Ebola virus. HIV pala, no? HIV no? is the virus that causes AIDS. This has been traced to a chimpanzee. So, uh, simian ho yan, ano? Galing po sa monkeys in Central Africa. And then we have P. gondi, no? O toxoplasmosis, no? Ito naman ay uh, it, infect, it infects our brains. So pagka nandiyan dyan ngayon, ay pumupunta ngayon yan sa brains natin. No? At uh, na-infect siya, nagkakaroon tayo ng encephalitis. Okay? So next. Okay. So may kita natin, yung cystocercosis naman, ito yung T-solume. Nakikita ito sa mga, sa mga hindi masyado naluluto no? ng mga pork. Alright, so ang nangyayari ngayon dyan, na, nadadala yan sa atin, natin yung tapeworm, tumitira ho yan dyan sa mga intestines natin. Yung cystocercosis. Okay. So toxoplasma gondi at saka yung uh, cystocercosis na T-solume na galing yan sa uh, hindi pa magandang pagluto ng bagoy. So it can uh, cause, it, it can also go up to the brain. And uh, last but not the least, ayan, ito pong dalawang ito, Ebola virus, no? at saka yung tinatawag natin na Lyme disease. Wala sa atin masyado ito, pati yung Ebola, yan sa Africa.
Sika po ito. Pero ito po yung mga examples ng mga nag-spill over, <coughs> nagkaroon ng zoonotic spill over, a jumping of species ng mga iba't ibang sakit through the years because of the changing climate. Dami po yan at marami pa tayong hindi alam. Ngayon po, mapapansin ninyo, meron po tayong bago, yung tinatawag natin na monkeypox. It is a relative of smallpox and it came from monkeys. Kaya nga po, uh, monkeypox yan. Ano? And uh, siguro narinig na rin ninyo yung isa na yung, uh, yung avian flu. Kaya nga po, avian flu yon ay galing po sa avias, mga birds. Kaya nga po, di ho ba, maraming pinapatay na mga uh, chickens pagka meron silang foot and mouth disease na mga baboy. Pinapatay na ako kagad dyan kasi baka huli pa sa mga tao ang mga. So what will we do? There are adaptations, strategies, and practices that we can do. And uh, I'm almost ending. No? May kita natin na in individuals and families, ito po yung pwede natin gawin. Ano? So yung mga mosquito nets, dun so masala na ako dun sa mga maraming may dengue at saka maraming mga malaria. Sa Palawan po hanggang ngayon, endemic pa rin at napakarami natin mga membro sa Palawan na apektado po ng malaria. Hindi pa rin no, nawawala. So yung mga screens, tapos yung cleanliness, di ko ba yung sinasabi natin na dengue na ginagamit natin ng household surroundings. Um, and then yung water and sanitation, good health maintenance, of course, uh, napaka-importante po ng immune system natin. At saka yung ating mga pets. Pansinin po natin, huwag lang natin papaka basta, basta lang yung mga pets natin. No? Kailangan natin ipabakuna rin po yan at i-maintain po natin. Hindi basta-basta pinapakain ng kung ano-ano. No? Kasi uh, it can reduce the growth of vectors and pathogens. Basta malinis po itong mga ito. Pinapaliguan at uh, binibigyan, pinapatingin sa veterinary pagka sila ay may mga sakit. Kasi baka ako mailipat sa atin yan. Next po. So, titignan natin ngayon, sa, kung may individuals and families, meron naman po sa ating mga paaralan. So, ito, no? we will look at the possibility dapat of uh, infectious disease na dapat in-integrate doon sa mga inaaral. So, tignan po ninyo yung mga anak natin. Ano? Eh, dapat po dyan, pinapasok na yan sa, hindi ko alam, nakapasok na yan sa mga ano, eh, higher education curriculum natin, climate change, ano? Tapos yung response ng, ano, masalo na ngayon, pagbalik natin, ano, uh, nagsimula na natin ang classes today, ano, Monday. Uh, tignan natin ngayon yung preparedness at saka yung response natin na dapat may health protocols pa rin tayo at yung personal matching. And of course, yung tignan natin yung solid waste management natin, yung mga toilets natin. Ano, uh, we should uh, inculcate the behavior change among our students to do the proper uh, protocol and proper solid waste management ng mga basura. Hindi lang basta-basta kung saan itinatapon ang mga ito. And of course, last but not the least, our slide for our churches. So sa mga churches natin, we should ensure the availability of our church health steward champions. So sabi nga ni Bishop kanina, eh, dapat po uh, may disaster drills tayo at may facilitators tayo sa mga simbahan natin dahil ang importante po na alam natin kung anong gagawin sa flood uh, kasi po uh, itong climate change nyo at saka yung earthquake para mas alam natin kung paano tayo gagalaw. And then looking at resource persons for health promotion. Katulad po nito no, na meron tayong mga ganitong pan, ano, pandeminar at napaka-importante. Uh, this is uh, part of our Christian education no, and, and uh, stewardship care, creation care. No? So facilitate climate change and health linkages. Let us have a creation care Sunday. Let us uh, practice awareness of our climate change and health linkage and uh, develop messages and sermons on climate change, environmental health, and stewardship care. Uh, this is the care of God's creation. Kasi nga, sabi natin, it is very important that we're able to balance biodiversity in the environment para mas maging manusog ang um, tao. Right? So, uh, there is a tipping point na tinatawag. 
our next slide will show us. No? Alam nyo, yung mga katawan natin, go ahead, yung mga katawan natin can control only up to a certain extent. Kaya nga, pagkatapos ng 39 degrees or 40, meron na tayong convulsion. Right? So, hindi na kaya ng katawan yan. There's too, it's too much. It's too hot. It's too, you know. It is resilient. Pero may tipping point and it becomes irreversible. So, humanity might die. So, it is very important na ngayon pa lang, we should prevent already adaptation because it is the way to go as the health of our future hangs in the balance. So, we don't know what's going to happen 25 years from now. But we know that we can do something before 25 years happen. No? So, the difference between 2 degrees and 1.5 degrees centigrade may bring irreversible impacts. No? So, it's very important because it's our children that's going to be affected. And uh, let, me, uh, let me end with an ad advocacy and let me end with this from uh, our very good uh, John Wesley, our founder, who gives us this admonition no? and it will apply to our health as to our environment and for caring for God's creation. Do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. So uh, I'd like to thank everybody and their time. Uh, if you, uh, marami salamat po sa lahat. Good evening. If you want to get in touch with me, and uh, I am leaving a copy of this uh, PowerPoint to our secretariat here, which is not here at the uh, Bangi Episcopal area. And if you want to message me for any questions uh, after this, later on, you can get me at glenroymg. Back to you, Bishop, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Pa. Thank you, Dr. Parazzo. Thank you. Thank you. Salamat po, Doc. Ang buong Baguio Episcopal Area po, Dr. Glenn, ay nagpapasalamat sa pagbibigay ninyo ng panahon at ang pagsishare po ninyo ng inyong kaalaman. Um, ang, ang nakakatuwa sa lecture na ito ay ni-review po ninyo para sa amin ang mga basic knowledge na dapat hindi namin makalimutan para ingatan namin ang aming sarili at ang aming kalusugan. And it moves us forward to seek more knowledge and understanding on how we can be responsible in our Christian stewardship, especially in response to health concerns and climate change. Mm -hmm. So we are very grateful at narinig po ninyo yung uh, pasasalamat ng ating mga kapatid sa Bea. Meron po tayong dalawa dito na uh, galing sa ibang bansa. Nakita ko po si Pastor Billy Abad, ang ating pastor sa United Methodist Church sa Spain. Oh, wow. uh, shout out nga, Pastor Billy. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Aktarap. Kababata. Kababata ko po ito. Uh -huh. And then, si Dr. Aktarap ay ating Associate General Secretary sa uh, Discipleship Ministries sa US naman po ang base niya. So, welcome po, Dr. Biner. Ay, magandang gabi po sa inyo lahat. At uh, pinupuri ko ang Panginoon, napakayamang lektura ni Dr. Glenn sa kasamaan sa kabataan nung araw, nung araw na yun, medyo matagal-tagal na yun. But I'm so happy to hear this lecture. So many things that can be applicable to our, the work of mission and ministry as a church. So salamat po, Bispo, at salamat sa inyong lahat. God bless you all. Thank you, Bishop. Amin, salamat Madrid po. Thank you, Dr. Glenn. Salamat sa napakayamang lecture po ninyo. Thank you. Thank you. Mga kapatid, uh, we are now ano, past our time pero dahil mga 11 or 12 minutes late tayo, I, I would like to 
open um, the opportunity meron po ba kayong gustong tanungin o gustong sabihin na malasakit I, I think I, we can entertain two speakers na hindi sila makakatulog ngayong gabi kung hindi nila masabi kay Dr. Glenn yung kanilang tanong o iniisip. Pero bago yon, um, Kier, mag-picture taking tayo? Yes po, Bishop. We can do that. Sige po. Okay, Please open natin lahat ng video. Opo. Open your videos. Let's take a group photo. Okay, so since marami po kayo, I have four pages here. Smile lang po kayo, ah. One, two. Okay, just keep on smiling. Second page. Okay, smile. Look at the camera. Third page. Smile. And the fourth page. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, dati kayat na tayong salunsod kakamsat. When uh, dati kayat yung uh, share na concern nyo kan ni Dr. Glenn. Nagyaman na kay the district superintendents nga lang to itata. Actually, marami tayo ngayon. Maraming fans si Dr. Glenn sa Baguio Episcopal area. Um, Bishop, just in case, uh, if we want also to type in, what we can do is uh, here can get all of the questions. Uh, even those who are not, who we will not be able to uh, answer tonight, uh, we will get all of them. Uh, just type them in in the chat box. I hope everybody knows how to use it. And then I will get back to you with the answers if we are not able to answer all of them tonight. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. Maraming salamat po, Doc. Right. And, uh, just uh, to... Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, sige po, Doc. I pagpatuloy niyo lang po. Okay lang po. Yeah, and uh, if, if ever... Um, Enough, enough questions are there, and uh, they will. It will need to have a follow-up lecture. I am very much willing to become part of that again, Bishop, just in case to clarify uh, the questions and we are able to come up with another topic. Thank oh, kung maraming tanong na maipon ngayong gabi o sa chat group o kaya sa email ay Magkaroon tayo ng follow-up lecture with our very own Dr. Glenn Roy Paraso, uh, our Executive Director ng Mary Johnston. Yeah. I'd like to uh, thank also uh, our Data Privacy Officer, si Mina, who's with me now. She is my Kia. <laughs> Siya po'y kumutulong naman sa atin dito sa... Executive Director's Office. Just like to recognize her. Right, so uh, do we have questions already? Ah, so there's a question from Sir Rico Razon. Okay, so uh, is it true that children have natural immunity to viruses and they can be compromised by COVID vaccines? Very good question. Ipapasin ninyo ho, no? parang very hesitant sila mag-vaccine pa ng mga bata. Di po ba? So, uh, I think that uh, the immunity that is afforded by children, uh, ang sabi nila, no? there has not been really so much studies with children versus adults for the reason na parang towards Throughout these two years na nagkaroon tayo ng COVID, it's either of two things. Ito nga sinasabi, may natural immunity sila o sila yung hindi masyadong pinalalabas ng mga magulang. 
and therefore they are protected. Pero naalala niyo dito nga po sa Tondo, nako eh naglipa na po mga bata. Ta uh, napakatitibay nila dahil parang hindi pa sila naka-mask. Diba? Pero ay kita mo sila eh talagang sila yung matitibay, no? Um ngayon, baliktad yung tanong eh, baka pagka binigyan daw sila ng COVID vaccines, is mas lalo sila makukompromise. <laughs> Di po ba? I think that's how the question was framed. Like we had natural immunity supposedly, but the COVID vaccines will give you the, the other way of that. No? Now, let me explain to you what uh, vaccines do. Uh, there are two types of immunity, as you were saying. There's natural immunity. And there is a, a hybrid immunity which is coming from the vaccines. Yung hong vaccines na yan, uh, our immunities are both done by antibodies. So yung natural immunity po sa katawan, meron ng antibodies na yan. Now, will we be able to fight the virus? Yes. yes. Our immune system can fight the virus. What it cannot fight is how fast it is going to affect us. So, sabi nga nila, eh, pwede naman huna tayong mag-natural immunity. And this was um, the formula of Switzerland. Earlier on in the pandemic, Switzerland went through natural immunity. Hindi mo na sila nagpabakuna kahit na sila ay first world country. Dahil sinabi nila, ah, baka kaya natin ng natural immunity. And uh, nobody knew about the virus. There was already SARS-CoV-1. Na two na kasi ito. Eh. Remember, in 2003, nagkaroon nyo ng coronavirus. Yun yung SARS virus. In 2003. Pero hindi yung masyadong dumami yun. Naalala nyo, pumata sa, ano, pumata sa Hong Kong yun eh. Muntik na tayo magkaroon nun, pero na-contain nila. sa Hong Kong at hindi na nakalating sa Pilipinas. So uh, that was natural immunity by itself. Nagkaroon lang ng quarantine at hindi pinakalat. Pero ngayon, hindi tayo naka-quarantine agad-agad at nailipat ng mas mabilis. So yun ang kalaban ng natural immunity. No? It, the virus, by virtue of its transmission speed, e eh, ma-overcome niya yung natural immunity ng tao. So bago makareact ang tao, e eh, napatay na ng virus. Kasi dalawa lang ho yan, ano? it's either the host or the virus that lives. Alright? So maaring pagka nanalo si virus, patay si host. At makakalipat na siya sa ibang host. Or nanalo si host, patay si virus. Yun ho yung antibodies natin. Ngayon, Yun yung vaccine, that is a synthetic antibody. Kumbaga, para rin po siyang virus na walang lakas. Meron lang siyang characteristics ng virus, pero uh, hindi na po siya nakakamatay. So ang nangyayari, nakikita lang siya ng virus, nakaka-build na siya ng antibodies sa katawan. Ah, yung antibodies, nakikilala na niya. Ito ngayon yung kailangan natin klase na characteristics para labanan si virus. Pagpasok ni virus sa katawan, aba, kakilala pala tayo dito kaya matatali sila sa gera. So hindi sila dadami kasi yung vaccine, eh napakarami na pala antibody. Hindi nila alam na briga-brigada na ng antibody na virus na nandun ay ng uh, antibody na nandun sa vaccine. Kaya ang tanong natin, can be compromised by COVID vaccines? On the contrary, it will increase the immunity dahil kung may natural na sila, ay meron pa silang hybrid. Kaya napapansin po ninyo, yung nagkasakit tapos na vaccine, ako ay eh, mas matagal po yung ano, immunity nun kesa dun sa hindi na bakuna o bakuna lang at hindi nagkaroon ng, ng COVID. Masabi nga nila, napakuna na ako, ba't nagkaroon ako ng COVID? Diba? Because no vaccine is perfect. Wala pong perfect na vaccine. And then the viral load, eh, napakarami ho masyado ng mga nagyigera sa atin, eh, na, natatalo po muna yung katawan. 
bago nakakagawa siya ng mga weapons panglaban doon sa atin. Right, so that's a very long answer to a short question. <laughs> so, hindi po totoo, no? So, dapat po, ma- hindi sila makocompromise ng uh, ating mga uh, vaccines. Mm-hmm. Just for Thank vision. you very much po, Dr. Glenn. <laughs> Malinaw po ba yung sagot? <laughs> Opo. Uh, Thank you for sharing many perspectives related to the question kasi uh, maraming uh, dapat malaman uh, sa napagandang tanong ni Sir Rico, ni Brother Rico Rason. Thank you very much po, Sir Rico, sa inyong uh, pagtatanong. Thank you. So, nangako po ako, isang tanong pa. <laughs> Sige po. Habang nagaanda kayo ng tanong nyo, um, may I request isang kasama natin dito, um, si Pastor Celia Pico. Uh, mag-ready po kayo, Pastor Celia. Kayo po ang i-request ko na mag-closing prayer. Okay po ba? Yeah, kumakaway si Pastor Celia. Ngayon, for our last question po, Dr. Glenn. Go ahead. Ay, galing kay Pastor Federico Eschoco. Nasa chat po. Uh, Bishop, ito po ay tukol sa gadgets. Uh, Mukhang hindi po tutukol sa ano sa zoonotic viruses. <laughs> uh, are you wanting me to answer this question? Yeah, it's very interesting kasi um, mukhang si Pastor ay nababagabag sa paggamit ng mga kabataan sa gadget. Apo, apo. Uh, I will hazard, so, I will hazard a, an answer. I will hazard an answer to, to this uh, question. Um, WHO it, itself has a, has a committee just to talk about the effects of uh, potential effects of radiation to uh, the use of, uh, of our gadgets. Um, tinitignan po nila yung intensity, frequency, you know, at saka yung long yung, uh, yung length ng use ng ating mga gadgets. Um, ito po, uh, ang, ang radiation po kasi na nanggagaling po sa mga gadgets natin, sa totoo lang, it's very low. Almost nil. Ano? Kasi uh, ang ginagamit po nila dito ay napaka-low intensity po ng mga radiation. Now, I am not saying that because I'm for gadgets. <laughs> no. I'm just saying that that this is an ongoing study uh, that they're proposing and, and that they're doing now at the WHO. There is no recommended dosage uh, na dapat ba gano'ng kahaba o gano'ng katagal ano, ang, uh, ang uh, paggamit natin ng phone. Ang, ang sinasabi po nila is gano'ng po ba kaiksilang ang kailangan gamit for what it's supposed to do. So this is a communications uh, gadget. No? It is not a gadget for any other. It's primarily for that. No? Pero ngayon, dahil sa galing niya, nakakapanood na kayo ng mga isang oras, dalawang oras, whole films can already be watched through this uh, gadget. No? Now, ano ho bang diferensya nito at saka yung malaking TV? Diba? Uh, mas mataas po ang radiation actually ng TV. Ngayon, yung, yung tinatawag natin na um, amount of radiation na nakukuha natin, diba? mas, mata- mas mataas po ang TV kesa po sa mga gadgets. Ito po ay napakaliit. Pero meron din po itong radiation na katulad sa TV. Ngayon, ang question, 
Meron na bang usapan sa WHO tungkol sa epekto ng radiation? All right. So, in in big amounts, in vast amounts, like for example, X-ray tayo na X-ray, these are vast amounts of radiation. It can destroy cells in the body. Kaya po hanggat hindi pwedeng mag-X-ray, hindi naman ito dinadala sa ng X-ray. Hindi po ba? Kaya nga, kailan nung mahuling X-ray ninyo? Ay, nung isang taon no. Yeah, ganyan. So, yan po kaya. Kayang ma-absorb ng body yung radiation niya. But to be exposed to radiation at very big amounts, yan po ang uh, delikato. Uh, kasi yung big amounts na yan at saka yung length of time, yan po ang nakakasira sa mga cells natin. Okay? Mapapansin niyo ang sun po, ang araw natin, ang nagkupos, may radiation po yan. Sinabi po natin kanina. Pagka nabibilog ka masyado sa araw, uh, you can have uh, cancers masisira po ang cells natin dahil sa pagbilad natin sa araw at na um, tayo ay exposed palagi. Although, we have adaptive mechanisms, ano, yung tinatawag natin na, na melatonin natin, ano, melanocytes natin, na siyang nagiging darker ang skin natin para protektahan ang ating katawang sa radiation. But uh, over time, it can cause cancer and damage to our skin cancer and damage to our eyes and ho, pagka masyadong malakas ang uh, radiation. And of course, because of that, it will affect our health. No? It can destroy our organs also. Kasi nakaka-penetrate po ang radiation din pagka masyadong matindi sa loob po. Kaya nga yung tinatawag na radiotherapy. Di po ba yun sa cancer? Mm -hmm. Di po ba? Yung radiotherapy ay ginagamit po ng isang klase ng paggamot sa cancer. Dahil yun po ay pinapatay niya yung mga cancer cells. Kaya gumagamit ng radiation. Kaya lang, ang mahirap po doon, eh pati po yung normal na cell ay tinatamaan din po ng radiation. Kaya po nangihina ang mga taong ng radiation pag ginagamot sila sa cancer. Eh napakarami pong mga session. Hindi po ba? Hindi na naman isang session ng radiation. Eh. Kaya nga po, maraming nasisirang cells talaga Namamatay ang cancer cells, pero namamatay din ho yung mga normal cells natin. Thank you for the question. Back to you, Bishop. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, th that is a very practical answer at, at the same time. Ngayon, eh, meron tayong basis sa uh, pag uh, decision natin at pananaw natin sa paggamit natin ng gadget. So, mas malakas pala yung radiation ng TV, ano? Okay. Kesa yung mga malilit na gadget natin. Pero, so, compared to our TVs noon, dahil po LED na ngayon ang mga TV. Hindi po ba? Yung, uh, I see. Low, yeah, low emission na sila. Talagang they're very safe compared to yung mga TVs natin noon na may mga, may mga mahaba sa likuran, hindi po ba? Ngayon, puro flat screen na. Dahil halos wala na pong radiation ng mga TV natin na LED. Kaya I would suggest, if you're going to buy a TV, ay pumuha po kayo ng LED uh, na TV. 